All right, Amanda Shankress. Amanda, this is one of your favorites. Why? Julia Roberts, Denzel Washington, John Grisham adaptation. I was nine years old and I didn't know better. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Sean? Um, I don't know if it's one of my favorites, but it's basically one of my three or four favorite film directors of all time. Kind of digging into his old bag of tricks to elevate something that is maybe not even necessarily worthy of his Some bag Alan of tricks. Some Alan J. Karaoke? Yeah, <laughs> a, little, a little bit. Um, and of course, like the star power that Amanda talked about. And I was, you know, 10, 11, 12 years old when Grisham took off. And I was reading those novels and kind of into those novels. And at the time, I was like, this guy's like the new J.D. Salinger. I was like, this is a great <laughs> fucking artist. This guy can fucking write. <laughs> These characters. You were Meanwhile. like Franny and Zooey, Ray <laughs> the Roof Beam, and the Pelican Brief. <laughs> yeah, so I was in. I I really liked this era of Grisham movies. So it's a fun one. Cr, one yeah. of the great book slash movie ideas of all time. The Pelican which I think Brief we've mentioned before, but here's the premise: two Supreme Court justices with nothing in common are murdered. So why? Oh, a 24 year old grad student who happens to be very attractive comes up with a crazy conspiracy theory, but. One thing, she's right, and now she's in danger. <laughs> I could sell that in a room in 10 seconds. Yeah, you just did. I think you should have done the voiceover for the trailer. Like, instead of the, the guy who's like, in a world, like, you should be like, that was who says no? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was the 90s trailer ever. But do you remember anticipating this? Yeah, I think that, um, you know, it's funny. Since it came out, I, th I think I looked at this movie as probably a little bit of a less successful adaptation as the firm than the firm. Um, but since its release and like over the decades, it's become just like a very, very, very pleasant like movie to have on. Like mm. it is kind of to go, go back to the core foundation of this pod, like the kind of thing that when it's on, you're like, I'm going to watch 20 minutes of Pelican Breeze. Yeah. And I felt that just, just this, this time watching it for the pod. Two major stars. Absolutely. A nice point of their career. Yes. Julia is on a little 88 to 93 Mystic Pizza, Steel Magnolias, Pretty Woman, Flatliners, Engaged, leaves Kiefer Sutherland at the altar, little Jason Patrick, starts moving toward Lyle Lovett, Dying Young, Hook, two years off, a lot of rumors, comes back with uh, the Pelican Brief and reclaims her julia -ness. Yes. But it still doesn't really totally happen for her until 97 when she when she grabs the crown again. This is another, she's trying things. She's trying to work her way back in. The yeah. press coverage in 93 of her return and the and the two years that she took off and everything before is absolutely nuts. You sent us some of it. I did. I, she was also on the cover of Vanity Fair. And there's a long Q&A that is just, uh, it's not how we cover celebrities it's anymore. Confrontational? Yeah. Yeah. It's more like, prove to me you weren't a coke addict. Yeah. Right. You weren't? You sure? Do you ever see cocaine? <laughs> yeah, and, they don't do it that way. And now. she is also, in 93, just way more engaged. And there's just so much, there are so many quotes. Feisty. She's feisty, and she is just also, like, talking at great She's length telling, about like, anecdotes and all stuff. of this yeah. nonsense. And, you know, and she read this, and she disagrees with this, and she has, like, lots of theories on the press coverage of her, which I, you know, I, she's always been very personable. That's part of her charm. And But it's fascinating to read her just be like, no, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Yeah, I saw her on The View, and they were like, Boy, Matthew Perry passed away and like, did you ever watch Friends? And she just like scoots right past the question. It's like not even just like, oh yeah, well I was on Friends and blah, blah, blah. Right. It's like, yeah. It's she had the more... famous underwear episode. I know. I had the premiere magazine that I dug up where she's on the cover and it's like the Julia comeback piece written by Christopher Conley. And um, it's it's weird. She takes pot. She goes after the Steel Magnolias director at one point because there were all these rumors about Herbert Ross was being thrown on the set, which she confirms and then just absolutely annihilates him, and says he was mean and he was out of line in my opinion. Um, I don't give a shit. But if he thinks he can talk about me in such a condescending way and not have me say something about it, then he's nuts. I remember. Him saying to me once, when this movie is over, you're going to take acting classes? And she said, why should I? Um, blah, blah, blah. But just like annihilates him. This stuff never, does this ever happen anymore where somebody just goes goes off on somebody? No, everyone's really careful. It's really funny, though, that her reputation is as America's sweetheart because her persona is as a very flinty, 
defiant, mm. strong-willed person. Yeah. So even though she's so beloved, I feel like one of the reasons she's beloved is because she was do- willing to do things like this. She was willing to say, screw you. I'm I'm who I am. It was a good Letterman guest. and um, Yeah, but they're, they're definitely, I mean, I heard the rumors in Boston and I didn't know any Hollywood people. I was like, oh yeah, Julia had to go away. That was, you know, the vestiges of the 80s. But mm-hmm. she's like adamant. I didn't do drugs. I think she got so white hot famous that people seem to deal with that in different ways, as we've discussed many times. Right. On this At a yes. very young age. Too. Yeah. She was really young when she got She was the biggest female star <clears throat> in the world in 1990. Yeah. From yeah. that movie. And it, and it happened so quickly. It's yeah. like sleeping with the enemy like isn't even out. Or she's filming it when she's doing Pretty Woman and suddenly everything overnight just becomes like the Julia Roberts show. Yeah. No, she was 20 when she was cast in Mystic Pizza. Yeah. I mean, that's crazy. I just watched a piece of that recently, mm-hmm. and she's great in it. Wonderful. Like, it's hard to believe that it took two more years for her to become a major star, because you watch that movie, and it just seems like a Julia Roberts movie in the catalog now. Sean, would this have been a better movie in 1976 with Robert Redford as Greg Grantham and Jessica Lange as Darby Shaw? Does it, this movie make more sense in the 70s? The I, have a, I have a follow-up oh question to that, which is, is this movie better if Gordon Willis shoots it? Should this movie have just been a 1975 movie? Is it 18 years late? I'm I, I Really, it just boils down to the script for me. Like, I, I think if it's a better script, then yes, but it's not. And Pakula wrote the script himself. Yeah. He adapted the book. To me, it's not about the time that it takes place in, because honestly, like, this story is very resonant right now. Like, you mm. can make this movie right now and you could find an interesting way. Like, our our fascination with the Supreme Court and the geometry of the Supreme Court is kind of eternally interesting. So, I think you could have made it at any time. I wouldn't want to trade away any of the big three from the Paranoia trilogy that Pakula made. I wouldn't want to put yeah, in the yeah. Pelican Brief. Pelican Brief instead, instead of, of all the President's Parallax Men. Yeah. Or President's Men. <laughs> it could have been the one fourth one. It could have been. Seven? It could have, he could have punted on Comes a Horseman. Yeah. And and done this instead, and that would have been interesting. But n- I I don't know. This is a weird one because he didn't write a lot of scripts, Bakula, but the ones that he did write were often adaptations. Because I yeah. think he looked at source text and was like, yeah. "I got, I, I know how to do this. I know what this is it's in like my Chris head." Chris operates. Yeah, it's like Chris <laughs> looking, right. scanning the the rewatchables <laughs> lineup and saying like. Forrest Gump. I know exactly no, what I to just, do yeah, there. I take KOC stuff and I just move it into, <laughs> you know, the, 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 the where it needs to be. Um, I, the case for it existing perfectly in 1993 is what it meant to Julian Denzel and just, like, this is Denzel in the same month. He has well, there's also, like, Philadelphia. Philadelphia. the larger Grisham thing and it happening, you know, as the Clinton era starts and is going and, and this idea that, like, uh, a younger generation of ideal idealists could fix the corrupt institutions of the world or could there is still like this idea of justice that could supersede the corruption that's out there. And uh, as we found, I don't know if that's exactly true, but we'll probably talk about that more throughout the pod. This is, see how your energy seems low. Third <laughs> pod today? <laughs> no. Fourth? No, I'm w- waiting to hear where we're going to go with this. Reddit conspiracy probably changes this movie a little bit. Too. Yeah. Yes. Yes. This movie might have created the Reddit conspiracy board. You could make a case. She does the, the hardcore, most successful like, one ever. law library, like putting it all together by hand, though. She's she's really she's doing the work. I have a lot of questions about that, though. This is this could be a long picking nits segment. Yeah, absolutely. I can't wait. Okay. An unanswerable question. Do you want to use this as an opportunity to entree your feelings about kind of the greater conspiracies of this country that you've been thinking <laughs> sure. about? Sure. I mean, this is this is stepping on my. Hot do Vince take Foster a right bit? now? <laughs> oh, you want to do Vince Foster? Okay, sure. Now I mean, I'm back. <laughs> Sierra's up. <laughs> no, I, I, you know, just at some point while we're talking about conspiracy theories, I did want to point out that it, it, it is the 60th anniversary of JFK. Yeah. And I don't feel like I've gotten enough content from you on that besides what's up on Twitter. So, you know, any anything you I'm want to do. that you didn't do <laughs> what the doctors saw. We haven't yeah. done a pot. Listen, who says I'm not? Okay. There's okay. just a lot of content. Interesting. I go, you know, when I need the content, I dive in. I see. It is high season for you, yeah. yeah. There's been some good stuff. I've been on some text threads. There's been some conversations. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Will you be de-class- declassifying any documents or? I thought the doctor's JFK doc was pretty illuminating. Mm-hmm. Like they, all those dudes were in the hospital and were like, yeah, his back of his head was blown out. Mm-hmm. And they changed the autopsy. I don't know. I'm going to take that seriously. How does that fit with the four bullets theory, which is your, are you still, I think there were four bullets. Do you know I listen to the JFK rewatchables like once a year when I need some comfort? Oh, that's great. (laughs) That's like, if I had to like distill 
what I love about the three of you and how yeah. weird you are. It is like JFK it rewatchable. Is, it is Sean and refusing it's, and to hear yeah, the truth. Yeah, Sean is just like, I'm not prepared for this. <laughs> and you're just like, I think I'll be Jane knew something. And you're just like, he he knew. Maybe it wasn't him, but he knew. You're just like throwing in the CIA or yeah. whatever. It's really, it's very special. Let's see, I definitely was above. Sure, Thanks. yeah. I, one thing I learned this last time that I didn't, <laughs> wasn't in my research, yeah. was that there were military people that were there, or people who had fought in wars. Mm -hmm. And when they heard all the shots, they heard them from different places. Because when you're oh. fighting in battles, you're trained to kind of think, oh, that's coming that way, that's behind me. And as they were there, they were they were like, some, some shots are to the left, some shots are to the right. Okay. I thought that was telling. You and I did the work. We went to the book depository. We did, Listen. <laughs> was it you who did it? Yeah. <laughs> did you pull the trigger? No, we're just investigating. We okay. got. We, we're doing our own research. Um, back to this this movie. This was the big Denzel A plus lister. Yeah. Breakout month. Yeah. He is this in Philadelphia. He is acting with the two biggest white actors in the world at that point, Tom Hanks, and uh, I think Hanks had grabbed the belt from Cruz at that point. Maybe Costner's in there too. He's, what, yeah, what, you want to revisit it? Yeah. <laughs> He's somewhere in there. Yeah. Yeah. Julia is the biggest female star we had. Yeah. And he just bangs both of them at the same time. And then from that point on, it's Denzel season tickets, which starts the year before Malcolm X. But. I was trying to figure out whether or not for Denzel and Julia, Julia here, like other times that the two biggest stars of male and female star were paired together. And like, especially for this one, which we'll probably get to, is to not have a romantic plot line be mm. a part of that. It's pretty wild. Um, but it doesn't happen very often in Hollywood. You'd think they would effort to make that more and more common. A lot of research on this, which will, I don't know when you want to go to it. We're doing a podcast. Yeah. Let's yeah, go, man. Go ahead. You're in charge. Well, I already got my JFK stuff. So, one thing there's an urban legend that the studio squashed the interracial romance, which is not true. Debunked. In the research. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's like easily debunked. Um, Julia was at, in the novel, they're both white. In the they cast Denzel because she pushes hard for Denzel, and then she was up for let's keep the novel. And Denzel was the one who squashed it, mm -hmm. and he mm -hmm. was like, "I I just don't feel like the audiences want that." But he was really, as it came out later, he later admitted his core audience, a big piece of it was black women, and they and he was worried that they would be upset if he hooked up with Julie Roberts in a movie. And two years later, same thing with Virtuosity, same thing with Kelly Lynch, <laughs> cut it out. It was just like. He, he was almost like a political candidate. I know what my base is. This is bad for my base. And he was the one that squashed it. But I had thought for 30 years that the studio squashed it. Untrue. Yeah. Studios did other stuff. Like they squashed Eddie Murphy and Golden Child. They cut that out. Um, Beverly Hills Cop. They said no love scene for Eddie. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah, yeah. So there was a couple. But in this one, it was Denzel who did it. Do you yeah. think that the movie suffers because of that? I mean, it's 141 minutes. They probably could have thrown in <laughs> yeah. a three-minute something. What He's do you think, Sean? Keeping his powder dry for Mila Jovovich, and uh, he got game. <laughs> if I'm going to kiss a white woman on screen, it's yeah. going to be a prostitute in this film. Well, uh, that's when he changed. I, I don't think that there's a really good case for them hooking up in the movie except that we just want to see it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, we, of course you want to see like two of the most beautiful and charismatic people alive get together. But in the mechanics of the story, I actually, especially at the end, I really like that it's like a partnership and a friendship yeah. that concludes the movie. It feels like a more fitting ending. What do you, uh, what do you think? I journalistically, it would be unethical, you know, just on a basic mm. journalist source. You should plus, still be right. Plus, it's Tom, like this is yeah. the span of two weeks, and I, we don't need to get too far into my rules right, of right. like mourning, you right. know. And how like, long will you be giving it? Okay. Yeah. When, when, when Zach is when, when destroyed Shepherd by a car bomb. Leaves, yeah, it's <laughs> killing a car Zach's car bomb. a great guy. I would be upset if you was two weeks too. later. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah just, I like Zach. Exactly. Okay, yeah. since we're there, let's get on the record now. Two weeks would be too short. Two weeks is tight. You know, plus they are also are solving like a conspiracy. So but like they're just a ton they're of thrown together in these incredibly intimate the situations. The cabin, the rain is you know? palpable. You know, mm -hmm. the camera really lingers both What's in that, that hotel room. that one scene when their room. heads are in the room and they're touching each other, but not really? Right, they're, and they're just like pouring good. over lists. You know, it's it's sort of unavoidable. And then that last scene, I agree with you, Sean, that like you want them to come together as partners, except it's like scored as like a romance for the ages, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. And she like runs back and it's like a classic movie. Ooh, they're going to kiss. I would have been fine with one kiss, you know, just to okay. acknowledge. Can I do my... 
my David Spade voice for that. Yeah. I liked that ending the first time I saw it when it was called The Bodyguard. <laughs> <laughs> they totally ripped it's it true. off. True. It was like a year it's before. Yeah. yeah, But it still got me. It was good. Yeah. I think Denzel's character should have been married and that would have solved oh, the yeah. here's why they don't get together or have the two... Two scenes with him and his kids, and yeah, I the guess fact so, that he's single then, and she's single makes it seem like I don't that's know. Happen. Listen, the movie's already 141 True. minutes, and you don't want like the sissy SpaceX JFK. Like, where are you going in the middle of the night? Like, True. this weird guy keeps calling me on the phone. I, I'm kind of into like single Denzel. If I like adding, that house. If we're adding more minutes to the movie, yeah. you want more Tucci disguise. I see. I would have <laughs> turned into the spin and had Denzel have a white wife. That oh, like oh. Ashley Judd, yeah. and then he's cheating uh, on her with yeah. you know. Okay. Interesting how you had Ashley Judd <laughs> yeah. at your fingertips right at there. Fingertips. Is someone you thought of. Um, why also why is forty year old Denzel Washington, who's a successful newspaper reporter, single in this movie? That's weird. And he's right. he, he does he's seem Denzel a little older than her, but I don't would say in real life probably like ten twelve years older. Because like I, I think yeah. he's in his late sixties and yeah. she's in her late fifties. Because Mo Better Blues was on TV the other day, and I and that's it's only unreal. three years. Yeah, that it's, movie's amazing. We got to do that on the so rewatch. World. And but he looks so young and skinny in that movie, and it's only three years before this. So it's like he ages ten years in the three years. He seems like a thirty nine year old guy. He's like movie. a real sex symbol in that movie. He really is. And in the, as he's making decisions in his career, you can see that he's like, I'm the guy in the suit. Like you, you mentioned, yeah. that it could have been Robert yeah. Redford. In right. this movie in the 70s, like he's like, I'm the guy who's in charge. Like in Philadelphia, I'm in the suit. In this movie, I'm in the suit. I, even in Virtuosity, I'm in the suit. So I, I think that that's like a very conscious choice for him to kind of like age up a little bit. Yeah. Bernstein and Woodward aren't dating and all the president's men. They're not dating right? each other. Well, or, no, no, I mean, uh, they're not dating each other, but they don't. They, no, Carl. Yeah. Carl is super horny in all the presidents. Man, but right. I don't know what's totally. going on. He, yeah, right. He's hitting <laughs> Legendary on. Legendary stick and man, Carl Bernstein. Cancer sticks, too. Yeah. It just sticks yeah. everywhere. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's just smoking in the elevator. Yeah. Um, this just sets off 30 years and counting of Denzel, though, this month. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We are 30 years removed. This movie came out 30 years ago, and he's still in A plus list, yep. leading movies and throwing them on posters. An he's amazing run. He's the man. Cruz is like, I, I made another Mission Impossible. Okay. Just, just st step back <laughs> from the ledge, just, honestly. Yeah, just, Mission just, Impossible so you, 11. Did you see Mission Impossible? You're dead reckoning? Away. I refused. Okay. What? What? It's pretty good. Really weird movie watching year from you. This is loser behavior. This is absolutely ridiculous. I'm, I just wasn't in the mood yet. I, I'm, I'm going to watch it at I'm some point. I'm appalled. Okay. I'm going to watch it. You're, are you trying to denigrate Cruz, who's like basically the patron saint Cru of this Cruise podcast? Cruz is my favorite actor. I'm just, I haven't gotten around to it yet. <laughs> it's, it's a 30-year okay. drought for I don't him. do movie karaoke. <laughs> what does that mean? It's like, it's like the ninth Mission Impossible. You've done Rocky Three on this pod. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. It's just not, not there yet. I haven't been ready. It's been a busy year. Football, basketball, a lot, okay. of, yeah. a lot of content. I think you should watch it. It's a good movie. I'll get there. I'm saving it. Um, <laughs> the Pelican Brief Theory goes like this. Oil tycoon Victor Matisse. No relation to Victor Matisse. <laughs> Wasn't that the guy's name in Beverly Hills Cop? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's weird. He's exploiting the oil found beneath Louisiana marshland. It's a habitat for endangered subspecies of brown pelicans. And there's a court appeal that denies him the drilling rights. And our girl Darby believes. She tried, she she attacks it really smart. Right. She says, all right, why these two judges? Right. Yes. What do they have in common? What they rule for? Oh, they're both pro-environment. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Deep dives. Somehow does this without the internet during the Lexus Nexus era when I was in grad school for this era. You literally couldn't find anything. <laughs> no. No. You couldn't even find out who George Washington was. It took two If hours. it wasn't on the back of a baseball card, I didn't know. <laughs> yeah, it was, it just. I just didn't know you're it. You're just in a library and just know it, that, that, what was that, uh, modem noise? <laughs> yeah. yeah. That was, yeah. was the worst. Um, but she somehow <laughs> figures this out and it's a pretty good premise. It, it, it's one of those movies that makes you wonder, like, couldn't somebody do this now? It's almost like it's too close to home. You Couldn't mean, somebody be like, I'm going to take out two justices because I want to flip some law or some rule? Okay. 
could could someone pull off this plot? Not could someone write the Pelican Brief? No, could someone yeah. actually do yeah. this in real People, life? Literally Every day anyone could write, write the Pelican, Pelican, Pelican Brief. Brief yeah, yeah. feels exactly. inevitable. Yeah. Now. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The the Supreme Court assassination plot. I mean, the lot. You know, I don't. We don't have to get into the Supreme Court right now too much. But the last five years, there's been just like this incredible chess game of right. strategy right. around you know elections and when people positioning are retire, and yeah, yeah, when people should have retired or should they not have retired or you know, I remember when Scalia died, there was like it was. In a, in a place that was kind of odd and people were like, is there a conspiracy correlated to his death? Like, so all of, that's what I meant earlier when I was like, all of this really still resonates. And well, there's also like been a, like a couple of incidents in the last couple of years of like Supreme Court justices where they like find some guy down the street from his house or like, because that, that yeah. Avenal or something like that. Like there, there's definitely been like a heightened sort of pressure put on them. Absolutely. Grisham had some good ideas. Yeah. Great premises. Um, yeah. His I mean, Amanda and I were just yeah. talking about how, like, they stopped making Grisham movies with Runaway Jury. But he wrote, like, 15, 20 more books or whatever. Yeah. And it's like, but we do 45 Marvel movies. Like, we, we, yeah. we're keep, we keep pumping those out. But nobody's like, you know what? We got to do a, a newer Grisham. How come? I don't know. Also, an underrated, unbelievable name creator for characters. Hmm. Mitch McDeer, mm-hmm. Darby Shaw, just like really yeah. good stuff. Like AI couldn't spit out better combination names. You don't think AI could come up with Mitch McDeer? No. Okay. It's it's too good. <laughs> I think you underestimate AI. Ray <laughs> Grantham. Because he hasn't seen Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> the FBI's Gavin Verheek. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that one was good. I was enjoyed. Uh, do you remember what Susan Sarandon's character's name was in The Client? What? Reggie Love. Oh, that's right. Yeah, it's it's incredible really stuff. He, he, just, he was the goat. This movie cast includes... He's alive, by the way. Yeah, he is. This movie co- uh, <laughs> cast includes <laughs> the future president, Tony Goldwyn. Yeah. 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 Robert Culp is the president. Can't wait to talk about him later. <laughs> Our guy Tucci as Kamel, the assassin. Yeah. Want to do Tucci now? Where's he rank for you? As an actor? As, a, <clears throat> as an assassin. Yeah, I was gonna, yeah, as the, <laughs> he's been in a, Where's Camilla? He's been in top a few of your favorites. Tucci is very important to me. Miranda obviously. will pay me back. She yes. always does. She does. I mean, incredible. Uh, wonderful. And Julie versus Julia, the Nora Ephron film, as as uh, Julia Child's husband. This is, I think this is probably the first time that I encountered Stanley Tucci. Villain right? Tucci. Yeah, villain Tucci. I mean, I wouldn't say that this character or how he's portrayed in the media has aged the best out of out of all of the things in the movie. Mm. But, you know, that's, <laughs> what, what are you going to do? How he's portrayed in the media in the movie? In the movie. Okay. Yeah, yeah. you know. Um, Where's Kamel from? That's the thing. They just say the Middle Eastern terrorist. I have a guess. It's not great. I have a guess. Okay. Is I, it the Middle East of Sicily? I think he's supposed Stanley to be Tucci. like I think he's supposed to be like French Algerian. Okay. I okay. guess. Okay. This starts a great Tucci run. Mm-hmm. Is this before Big Night or after? Before. before because then he's in the Caruso Nick Cage movie. Uh-huh. He plays one of the evil cops. It so could happen in the movie? to you. No. The the <laughs> Oh, the Caruso. Caruso movie. Oh, no, Kiss of Death. Kiss of Death. I'm thinking of the, 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 the <laughs> other Nick Cage, Cage yeah, movie. The, yeah. the lottery a lot ticket? of people don't know yeah. this, but Kiss of Death is going to be the last rewatchable. I love that movie. <laughs> 30th anniversary, we're done. 2005. That'll be the day you get the call from Daniel F. Time to wrap it up, BS. <laughs> I see be you like, did Kiss of Death. Congratulations. <laughs> this is your you final mean, episode. You stop making these jokes because, like, when you did Goodfellas, I got really stressed out. And I was like, is Bill okay? Like, what's going on? <laughs> do you think true? Daniel Eck like, would do Kiss of Death rewatchables with us? <laughs> I think he would do Warrior. <laughs> do you? Hey, he's Warrior. a big MMA guy. Wow. Now, it, uh, people know when it's almost famous and uh, what's the other one we haven't done? Pulp, Pulp Fiction. Pulp, Pulp Fiction. Fiction. Those are the last two. And be like, we might see you next week. And then the feed just does. I'd um, say there's roughly somewhere between like 100 and 25,000 good films we could do. Yeah. yeah. Fair. John Lithgow's in this movie for some reason. Hugh <laughs> Cronin. Yep. Anthony Healed. Yeah. We'll get to him later. Miranda from Sex in the City. Sure Cynthia is. Nixon. Cynthia Nixon. Yeah. James Sicking. Yeah. Hill Street Blues. And then Sam Shepard. Absolutely. Are yeah. we doing it now? We're not going to do it yet. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, but Sean's guy, AJ, AJP, um, the last movie he wrote and directed, we've done All the President's Men on here. I can't believe we haven't done Starting Over yet because that's like the lost great Boston movie. We haven't done Presumed Innocent yet. Um, really good career. What get, Do the uh, nerd out for like a minute. Uh, Long Island legend, Alan J. Pakula. Started out working as a producer for Robert Mulligan who directed a bunch of movies in the 50s and 60s, most memorably uh, To Kill a Mockingbird. 
and heard of it. Learned basically how to become a film director and a writer and a producer and like matured at the perfect time, like in the early 70s when directors were empowered more. And so he's responsible for basically like the signature paranoid thrillers of that era. Yeah. Um, Clute and the Parallax View and All the President's Men are considered like the Trinity. Obviously, like Three Days of the Condor, the conversation are also in that conversation too. But um, kind of like the world's greatest craftsman. Great taste in collaborators. Chris mentioned Gordon Willis earlier, who shot a lot of his movies. Really good with movie stars, too. Really good at putting movie stars in exciting positions. Mm -hmm. And thrilling movies. They about Chris, too. <laughs> it's true. All about really shadow. Stars. All about tension. All about good pace. So, just a, just a truly great filmmaker. Kind of similar career trajectory, somewhat, to Sidney Pollack, who directed Three Days of the Condor, where they transitioned from, like, the 70s kind of very par paranoid, conspiracy-minded thrillers into, like, the more, like, big screen, big, like, huge Hollywood star 80s stuff and into the 90s, yeah. Does he have a movie where he wears suspenders and stands over a Yeah, I'll, sh I'll share that with you offline. <laughs> okay, yeah. thanks. <laughs> Pox, like, hold my beer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is, uh, I'm going to say a little meandering. This movie. Yeah. 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 I think the 1970s, Alan Jay would have made it. Well, maybe, okay, maybe so made some I, cuts. I wonder whether or not that has a little bit to do with Grisham's hold on, like, the American reading public and the potential of them being, like, you know, the the audience for these movies is, like, this guy, like, these books were being read by, like, one out of every three people in the country. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you have to imagine that the investment that they would have, that they were like, okay, I want all the stuff from the book and the movie. And they're pretty plot based. They're pretty. They're pretty propulsive, but the the firm's really long too. You know, like the yeah. I think a lot of his yeah. the adaptations of his books are not ninety minutes long. We talked about it when we did the firm podcast, and me being disappointed when I went to the theater for that because the book was so good. But it was just because I had read the book and I knew it was going to happen, and it almost like it took a couple years. Right. This one's different. I don't think it's as rewatchable as the firm is, but I think it's fascinating for all these different reasons. That makes it fun to rewatch. Not like the firm has like just like the Brimley part. Yeah. <laughs> all the all the stuff that we hit and the music's really good. And it's really it and Hackman just like with this really crazy Hackman performance. Right. And then Cruz at the height of Cruz. And um it's more, it's a more the firm is more fun. Totally. Um, this is kind of a sad and elusive movie, you know? It's like his his her the man he's in she's infatuated with dies early on in the yeah. film. And also, we don't really know who the bad guy is ultimately in this movie. And then even yeah. when we find out, we're kind of like, okay. Like, it's not actually that exciting. I had yeah. that in uh, nitpicks. Would we be better off knowing that guy in the movie? If Matisse is in the movie. Matisse has, like, three scenes. It's it's odd. I think it's cool because you get so much Oval Office stuff to have the president be the avatar of the evil plot. Yeah. But... You could make the argument that um, that Matisse would have been a more effective, like heavy in the movie. Yeah, forty-five million dollar budget made one ninety-three. That's, That's right. a lot. Pretty good. So that doesn't quite qualify for that. Made how much money? Yeah, I actually thought it was going to make more. <laughs> yeah, Ebert three stars. He wrote, it's an old law of the movies that ordinary novels are easier to film than great ones because the director doesn't have to worry about the writer's message and style, if any. The Pelican Brief is a good illustration of that principle. By casting attractive stars in the leads, by finding the right visual look, by underlining the action with brooding, ominously sad music, a good director can create the illusion of meaning, even when nothing's there. Ebert, not a huge Grisham guy. Yeah. No? Not a lot of plot for him. Well, that's the thing. These movies are really, pl the books are really plotty. And so it feels like all of the adaptations of the books are long because the, they're trying to just get all of the beats of the story into yep. the movie. But in this one, it feels like from minute like 85 to 122, you're like, why, why are we taking so long? To get, get on with the it. Long, it, like it. The yeah. long passage where they're trying to figure out who Curtis Morgan is is interminable. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, like that, it's it's almost like that happens too late in the movie because you're like, this can't possibly be the climax of the film. Right. And yet, it sounds like we're down in the movie, but Not we all. all really like it. Yeah, it's, it's just it's, it's just makes some weird choices. It's kind of, it's serving this great dinner, but then you're like, 
wait a second, why do we have sweet potatoes and mashed potatoes? That's weird. Right. It's just like, like four of those choices. <laughs> it's a great metaphor. So many pies. <laughs> yeah. It's, why yeah. didn't we just pick two pies? Why do we have but seven? But also you like all the pies. Yeah, it's like, all right, I'll try the I pies. a lot of it is like, it is like 70s karaoke, right? And mm-hmm. it like reminds yeah. you of he even all goes the to the Washington Penn. Post. Exactly. Mm-hmm. It's like Lithgow's in it because he wants like an Oscar for pay- playing yeah. Ben Bradley part yeah. two. Like we, we all know it's not, it's obviously not as good, but I still like it. First rewatchable scene, we get the two judge murders, which happen at a nursing home <laughs> and a gay movie theater. Yes. And this is, we're in peak gay movie theater as a plot device because we also have it in Philadelphia the same month. Mm. Is that a nursing home? Or is that, his home I think and that's live, his home in with a a live in nurse. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I get you're right. I guess oh, it's, it's just a very that'd be nice pretty George funny if home. a Supreme Court yeah. judge was just also at a nursing home. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nursing home is the wrong. It's like, oh, I gotta get back for night, dinner. Night so night we wrap up this appeal. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's mac and cheese tonight. Tucci <laughs> sitting behind the guy's great though. <laughs> yeah. In the theater. Yeah. It's good stuff. He's got the popcorn, and then you see a rope. And you're like, oh, this isn't gonna. Should go we right. start talking? Can we talk about his out his costumes as we go? Okay. Oh, okay. You're Next like the Pakula have... of directing this pod. <laughs> it's all that light and shadow. <laughs> Julia piecing together the Pelican brief I have is the next one. She throws the theory, theory at Sam. Yeah. Her boyfriend, Sam Shepard, her professor. Yes. Hold that one. <laughs> Does a little library research. Could see Julia in a library. Yeah. Right. yeah. Can I take out the... Um, one of my yeah, great l- fantasies. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When will Julia There's get into a library? Than yeah. Julia Roberts asking to see... <laughs> Are publicly you familiar available with the Freedom of Information Act? <laughs> so good. Yeah. <laughs> Next one, Sam's car blows up right after he says, Miss Shaw, you take my breath away. Yeah. Which I have for best quote of this movie. And then Julia does a... <gasps> <gasps> yeah. <laughs> you look just like her just now. <laughs> Thank you. I have John Hurd gets killed right into Tucci trying to kill Darby. Mm-hmm. And a great shot, Gordo nominee, Chris, for most cinematic shot, the camera staying on the mirror on the hotel closet as and then the closet slightly moves as Kamel comes comes in yeah yeah good stuff you also enjoy the shot right after that where john hurt admires his torso in the mirror right i just i actually my the wallpaper in my bedroom is just stanley tucci with a popcorn box (laughs) over his crotch (laughs) (laughs) john hurt's really kind of cooking in that scene yeah oh yeah this is also it's a great, great time for John Hurd coming in for five minutes of a movie and being really like in the line of fire. Yeah. As the model playing the model great car. Great John Hurd run here. Julia meets Denzel in NYC. Yeah. yeah. Powerful stuff. How do we feel about Julia's acting in the middle part of this movie? When she's just really quiet and scared. I would like to, I would like to and adjusting wanna pa- her. Want to save that? Okay. Well, we don't have to save the, it. I'm no, it's ready it. to comment when you guys need it. It's it's a great usage of, you know, when she's in there, she gets back to the first hotel room and has to like adjust her 90s wrap dress with the buttons and it's shaking. Yeah. And it's yeah. just, that's a, it's a great period detail. I have the Lithgow Denzel reunion. From Ricochet, yeah. Yes. They're back, baby. Okay. First time they meet, it's like, oh, in the last time I saw you guys together, you were intentionally giving him VD and trying to murder him. <laughs> <laughs> now you guys are collaborating. This is right. kind Story. of the editor-writer version of giving you VD, though. Their relationship yeah. is fucking stupid. It's brutal. <laughs> but we also get a, a Pakula Washington Post newsroom reunion, mm-hmm. even though it's not the Washington Post, but it is. Get him back there. I have four more. Goldwyn t- tells the president of the limo that the Pelican Prief won't die. That's good. Yeah. And does the Mr. President, you don't want to know. I always oh, yeah. love when anybody works for the president says that. Darby goes to get the security deposit box with the parking garage chase. The president finds out Goldman in the camera room. It's like a weirdly good shot because yeah. you think he's like going to kill himself, but he doesn't. He's just watching. And then uh, then the farewell hug with the uh, Denzel interview with a little Edmund, Edmund Newman. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anything else? What I miss? I like the sit down with Boyles at the end. When it's just like it's and it's Julia and Denzel across the table, just because it's like that to me is the most victorious moment of the mm. of the whole thing. Right. I mean, so you're the little lady who started this whole brew. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like that's not the first time that line was said in a movie. It's a it's a deep Abe Abe Lincoln cut. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what he said to Harry Beecher Stowe. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. What do you have for most rewatchable CR? I like the river walk assassination and the whole thing with him pulling out the gun. And, and I, this is this is also something that you could nitpick, but I thought it was a great crowd scene. I love everybody scattering once the body hits the yeah. floor. Yeah. I like mm-hmm. John Hurd and the, that combo. I think that's my and favorite. Since they, and since you're kind of in the dark about her being protected at that point, 
it's really like, what the hell is going on? Like, yeah. who killed him? Mm-hmm. You know? And you're in the dark, even if you've seen the movie five times. But yes. we'll get to right. that later. Yeah. What's your favorite, John? I think the most 90s scene in the movie is the one I enjoy the most, which is when she's in class and being taught by Sam Shepard. Uh, and he's like those pitching oh, yeah. the questions yeah, to yeah. the yeah. class and their answer. I, I, I think that scene's really fun. Now she's just like, you're triggering me. Yeah. <laughs> De- <laughs> definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you singling me out? <laughs> Why don't we just burn this book? <laughs> what do you have? Can I do all the Sam Shepard scenes together as a group? You can, because that takes okay. us right into what's age the best. Yeah. Sam Shepard, just be in more movies. Yeah. What were you doing? He he worked he, pretty steadily. He, yeah. He was, he was funding his thriving I get it. Play he was one of the great playwrights. Career. I get yeah. it. But just sneak some more movies Do in you there, think Sam. That, is this Amanda Dobbins' smoke show of the week? <laughs> is, is Sam Shepard? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's so... Am I allowed to do this now? Yeah, we can do it now. It's fine. Well, no, we don't... Well, I no, can it's save fine. it. We can do it. So this plus baby boom just operates like a really specific late 80s, early 90s, like ideal. Like this is the true American man. Yeah. You guys can have your cowboys and I have Sam Shepard. Just kind of not not in a big city, just alone. He's he's seen some things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's lived some life. He's a little weathered, incredibly handsome, and only has eyes for me. It's uh <laughs> it's very special. My wife felt exactly yeah, the same. It's, it's All women love Sam Shepard. I think that's one of the rules in life. And uh, I had this later for unanswerable questions, but he really probably could have been one of the biggest stars in the world. Like he could have been Brad Pitt if he's just like, I'm going to act. I mean, but for he, was, that he era. was an avant-garde artist. I get it. You know, like he was. Also was eclectic taste in the ladies. Patti Smith. Mm-hmm. Joni Mitchell. Jessica Lang. Ma- Jessica Lang for, for a long yeah. time. Ever. Pretty yeah. complicated guy. Seems like a very tortured person. Yeah. An incredible artist, like a great actor, like one of the great heads of hair in the oh last hundred years. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I mean, you can, you can like hand wave the playwriting, but I mean, I'm, they I were like five of the, the no, signature no, American plays, you know? Just like, talking about him as and an And then actor. he wrote Parasexus, right? Yeah. 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 No, it's it turned out great for him. Yeah. But there's but he, this but other he path. He had a lot of demons and I think that probably helped, probably prevented him from being like, a classical leading man. Yeah, it's like know? when you watch the right stuff and you're watching him, you're like, exactly what you're thinking. You're like, how is this guy not like the biggest movie star in the world after watching him play Chuck Yeager? You know who's psyched that he decided to write plays? Tom Hanks, Kevin Costner, all the people that he would have been competing against for roles in the late 80s, early 90s. Yeah. He couldn't have been in Sleepless in Seattle. Yeah, but... Tom to- ha- n- Sam Shepard is the widow wow. in Sleepless in Seattle. Oh, wow. He could do it. It would be a darker movie. Because to Sean's point, there is th- there are demons, and that's like yeah. that's part of the appeal. You think you'll be the one to fix it. Um, but he would be wonderful in Sleepless in Seattle. You trying Who's to fix Sam Shepard after Jessica Lange could not is, I, is well, a movie I would watch. You know, that is <laughs> <laughs> I can fix him. <laughs> Being a woman is hard. This is these are the goals we set for ourselves, you know? I admire your fortitude. <laughs> Thank you so much. What's your favorite Sam Shepard movie? Red stuff? I think that's his coolest part. Yeah. yeah. I think he did a good job at the like, latter stages of his career of like playing the kind of grizzle. Like he's really good in Mud. Yeah. You know that, yeah. that movie, the Matthew yeah, McConaughey he's movie? Yeah, awesome in Mud. You know, like he's he's in a lot of good movies like that too. But I think that's, I mean, that's like your favorite, right? Chuck, uh, Chuck Yeager? Chuck and, and Days of Heaven. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good too. Days of Heaven rewatchables coming soon? Probably not. What saves the best? <laughs> What's age the best? Murderers who change their appearances during the movie. Hmm. Say no more. A fucking BS favorite. <laughs> so, do you think that Kamal came knew he was going to get the guy in a gay movie theater, a gay porn movie theater, and had an outfit planned for that? Or was that... Where did he put his gun? We didn't have a gun. What are you talking about? When he comes up... Well, I'm sure he could get a gun in the United States. That probably is no, the problem. Fir- the first murder, yeah, right. then he's a jogger, so he must have dumped the gun. Yeah, he dumps the gun. But yeah. when he gets well, he- the other justice in the theater, yeah. it's just such a great, like, I'm going, to the, I'm going to a porn movie outfit. And I just wondered whether or not that was something he planned in advance or something that it just, you know, he improvised on, on the scene. Well, it seems like he doesn't learn about his targets until, until- he takes the... Motor, you know, the motorboat in yeah. and arrives at the hotel and gets the picture and with it, just the two w- circles. What age the best for me is the whole looking for Mr. Sneller routine, yeah. which is how I'm going to start communicating with Sean. 
Right, just slip an envelope under his door. <laughs> That's fine. So, Let's do that for 2024. <laughs> Wait, but here's my other Tucci question. And Tucci apparel question. Yeah. So it, he's wearing the toupee. Yeah. When he's jogging. Right. For when he kills Rosenberg. He good adhesive tape for that. Right. But then he removes it for the the gay club. Yeah. But then it's back when he goes to Dulles. Mm-hmm. And it appears to be the same toupee. Did he gr- put it so in like, his pants? I mean, just what's the storage? Situ- yeah. What's the plan? Don't know. Or okay. maybe he had multiple toupees. Sean, you can have one of these three. Jogging Tucci, Hotel Businessman Tucci, or Gay Movie Theater Tucci. Just as a look for like six months. What, what about, thinking? can I also throw in dad bod Tucci when he gets oh, dad assassinated? Bod, yeah, assassinated? dad bod Tucci. Yeah. Mm, I don't want the latter because I'm a little close to that right now. <laughs> uh, I think jogging. You know, the spirited night jog. Movie theater. You don't have to look at me. Sneaky <laughs> rip. Tucci. He's, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, where is yeah. 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 Also disguises for what stage is the best. Julia. She breaks out the pigtails and the sunglasses. Super cute. She breaks out the pretty woman wig mm-hmm. from the 20-minute oh, yeah. mark. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't overlook the Knicks hat, for Christ's sake. She thing. brings out the Knicks hat. I and mean, one of the most with the, iconic hats. Yeah. Whatever. The like, I, I like when Julie's on the run and wearing disguises. Yeah. Great and, she, and she's repping for Anthony Mason and yeah, Charles Oakley. The, yeah, the yeah, Riverwalk, the, the pigtails, yeah. and the that like could be... Like an Instagram, like any Instagram ad that is so on trend right now. Oh my god, my daughter literally like the, worn the fanny that. pack. The yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the and the fanny the thick, pack and thick the thick pigtails are in the button to oversized button down, button up to the collar. It's okay. really good. Yeah, I mean her number one look of all time was the brown dress and the polo scene in Pretty yes, Woman. Yes, of course, which might be the best anyone's ever looked in the history of mankind. But the pigtails are strong. The the whole all of the looks are back, which just happens when you do a nineties movie. Yeah. You know? Uh. What's age the best? Professors having affairs with their students. <laughs> oh, wait, no. Okay. Um, but <laughs> great Shepard Julia chemistry in this. It's yeah. also acknowledged by Verheek that Callahan does this quite a bit. Mm-hmm. He's like, oh, how yeah. old is she this time? You know, like. I love when they work that into a movie. <laughs> ah, another, another leading lady here, She's huh? Very mature. Yeah. 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 God, More God what's age the best? Tony Goldwyn playing a scumbag. Yeah. Really good. He, get, he always gave great scumbag. Yeah. I mean, goal, ghost, nobody's better as a scumbag. Newspapers? They've what, aged the best. best. And the worst, but aged the best. <laughs> okay. It's just the newspapers are cool. Fun to have a movie centered around newspapers. It's the best. Newspapers Newspaper breaking movies, stories. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. One we of my couple, favorite genres. We had a couple around this time. Was in the paper right around here, right? Yeah. What do you got, CR? Uh, I like, uh, I think what's aged the best is having a secret room where you film your boss. <laughs> <laughs> Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> the hell? Uh, I think uh, New Orleans as a filming location uh, yeah. is just Good awesome. Good call, CR. And, um, That's why you're here. Telling the cab that you jump in to follow another cab. Oh, yeah. God damn. That That's a great fucking one. Awesome. I, I want to do that, but it's just all ride share now. But it wouldn't be great if you and I just one day, like, you get in a cab at the Omni Hotel and I'm like, you follow race that, that cab. After me. Yeah. What is the percentage of time in real life that the other cab would, would actually follow the cab? We we can't know until we try. I feel like it's maybe 20%. Right. Do they I think if the you're skills? like, there's another hundred in this for you, if we... Yeah, you yeah, gotta yeah. bribe the guy. Yeah. The game. Let's all go to LAX together. We'll all get four <laughs> separate cabs and we'll try to chase each other around. What do you think? That's fine. Okay, I, it fine. probably works better yeah. in New York City, but I'm down for the... Uh, that would actually thing. be good YouTube content for the rewatchables is to see if anybody would be like, yeah, absolutely. I'll follow that cab. <laughs> okay. More would say it's the best. Don't die the, in a fiery crash. <laughs> <laughs> if the White House looked familiar, that's because it was. They used it in Dave. Yeah. One that's of the right. great movies of all time. Yeah. Incredible. Um Darby Shaw and Greg Grantham, I wrote. Um Jack Horner voice. Those are great names. <laughs> 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 and then uh and then Roger Ebert, drive by shooting of John Grisham. He writes in that review. John Grisham, current king of bestsellers list, bestseller list, is also taken seriously in some quarters, but I'm not sure why. His plots are no better or worse than average, and his characters are at their service. His novels exist to be filmed. His next, for example, has been sold to the movies before being written. Ebert. Well, didn't he write this for Julia? Like, he wrote Darby thinking of Julia Roberts. 
That's Probably. what he said. That, that, yeah. yeah, yeah, that is what he said. That Although that's just... convenient that they made exactly. the film star Julia yeah. Roberts. Anything else for you? What's age the best? I like the um, hallowed director's like late career comeback because mm. Pakula was like down in the eighties. Like I don't, I would be surprised. It's like if Sophie's if, Choice and then three movies I haven't you've heard never of. heard of, yeah. like Orphans and Rollover and all these movies that nobody's seen. He did Dream Lover. Dream Lover. And then even I didn't like Dream Mother. <laughs> like a bat out of hell, presumed innocent, this the devil's own consenting adults. Four movies that people are like, I'll go see that movie. And you know, he was like in his sixties, seventies and made a great comeback. And and reminded everybody what a great film. You guys was. always do the like director who's been the best director working in each decade, you know, and, and like whether somebody can have multiple decades. But you can make the argument that he's the best thrillers director in the seventies and the nineties. You yeah. could make the argument. You, you I could. would take I don't Tony know if Scott win, over, but... over him in the 90s, probably. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, there's a case. Anything for what stage the best? Self-publishing conspiracy theorists. Oh. Yeah. That's true. Good one. Yeah, I mean. Good one. Also jogging. I mean, like, <laughs> you know, Tushi looks uh, obviously complicated, but it's a great outfit, mm -hmm. as, as Sean mentioned. And Denzel's then, jogging. And then Denzel jogging awesome. also. I guess those short jogging shorts. Yeah. Men wearing shorter shorts. Th there we go. I got to it. It's back. It's I think back. It is back, but is I back. think everyone should. Cooper Flag, very short shorts. Should investigate. I had a hot Denzel take I was going to do later. Okay. Not a great jogger in movies. Okay. Good athlete. He seems like he wants to show us that he knows how to jog. And he do you does think like that's a very front of the feet kind of high hop run? This is yeah. And it's not keep going. It's not cool. Like, do you? But do you think he's like sending subliminals at crews? Like this is how you run. <laughs> I, I he runs to me like a guy with bad knees. I think he runs like a guy who isn't planning on running for very long. He just is running for as long as the take is. But I think he jogs in this. I think he jogs in Crimson Tide. I don't like his jogging. <laughs> he jogs on the submarine? Bad jogger. Don't Denzel. they jog on the submarine to like get exercise and stuff? Or is yeah. he, You would he, know like, better than I. I'm pretty sure he jogs in that movie. On a scale okay. of jog one. Jog and remember the Titans? He might jog in there. There you go. On a scale of one to Robert Patrick in Terminator 2. <laughs> Robert Patrick he's like is, a the, 3 .5. is the best runner of all time. That's, that's, the best, that's he's, running, yeah. That's he's the best. It's him. And when you watch those old clips of sprinters from like the 1920s and 30s. Okay. But Robert and Robert Patrick, Patrick has this, right? He has like the he's hands. So he's also made of liquid the in robot that hands? Yeah. I was watching yeah. Terminator 2 two weeks <laughs> ago. Robot, and yeah. he's chasing a car that's going like 35 miles an hour. It's, yeah, it's completely believable. Yeah, I, I totally believed it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what <laughs> age the worst is Denzel's jogging? No, I just, I don't like his jogging. Okay, all right. <laughs> I love Denzel. He's one of my favorite yeah. actors of all time. I'm just not a great jogger. Pretty good jump shot. Good athlete. Good yeah. movie athlete. Kid Cudi Pursuit of Happiness Award for Best Needle Drop. Doesn't really exist in this movie. Big Kahuna Burger Award for Best Use of Food Drink. Kamal's Popcorn. Oh. Yeah. Great. I was, I was going to say... Them. Yeah, he eats, I was going to say the chocolate that he eats. Oh, after that's good. Killing yeah. Gavin. John Heard. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. I like it. Den of Thieves, Benny Hanna Award, Scene Stone Location, New Orleans. Yeah. I was going to Riverwalk or uh, uh, on the podium, Mount Vernon, hmm. which yeah. I've never actually been to. I've been. Quite beautiful. It's been, been kind of a, it's more of like a theme park now than it, it appears to be in the film. There's a lot of stuff going on at Mount Vernon these days. Do you think Rosillo has been to Mount Vernon? He must have, right? It's probably his Christmas vacation. <laughs> <laughs> Ten days at Mount Vernon. Solo. I will listen to every minute. <laughs> Went We're to Mount Vernon. A lot of people say don't go there for vacation. I did. <laughs> <laughs> Runtime two and a half hours. <laughs> people say not a great place to uh, go out, but I, I beg to differ. Yeah, they've got a kids club. Just Many guy at kids the pool. There. We talked about Washington. <laughs> <laughs> Big BCS guy. <laughs> Vincent. The Vincent Chase Award for Are We Sure This Character Was Actually Good at His Job? It has to be Tony Goldwyn as the chief of staff, right? Is it, is so it, what's your plan to I swing the Supreme Court? Uh, we're going to actually kill two of them, and don't worry, it's not going to come back but to But he anyone. doesn't do it. But, but he knows about it. I think he's aware of it, right? After the fact? Yeah. You're squashing that thing immediately if you're anywhere close to the president. What do you have, Sean? Well, we're just like veering into a like the structural issues of the movie. Yeah. This is a mm -hmm. deeply flawed story. <laughs> like no one in the movie except for Gray is good at their job. Yeah. There's not a single Now Darby doesn't have a job. Darby's trying to solve a conspiracy, but that's not her that's job. True. Right. But every other person, the director of the FBI, the CIA guy, the Gavin Verheek, Fletcher Cole, 
the president of the United States. These Gra- people are incompetent. Gray's, Gray's editor. Gray's, uh, John Lithgow. John Lithgow. These is- people are terrible at their jobs. And they're in the seats of power. Yeah. Like, can you imagine if working at like a major company that was like that? <laughs> no idea what you're referring to. <laughs> I think uh, they'd also argue, like, is Gray Grantham that good at his job? It's at debatable. Least he listens it's debatable. to Darby and is like, I probably someone out of the millions of people of lives should investigate who killed two Supreme Court right. justices. No one else seems to care. Right. That's, There's like yes. no other coverage. John Lithgow's like, why don't you get down there like everyone else to cover the primary? And it's like, well, sir, because two Supreme Court justices yeah, were Yeah, this would be the biggest story in what 60 years. Well, century. Century. Yeah. If two Supreme Court justices were murdered in America, this would be and the he's story like, of the century. I don't know. I don't know. I think part one of the things that's aged the worst is our capacity to be scandalized. I don't know that that would be that would be that but big. But at least in 1993, f- people stormed the Capitol on for, for the yeah, certification the, of sure, election. Sure, but they've been covering and on it on the morning show. At the, <laughs> <laughs> on the morning show, Bradley Jackson's Bradley brother, Jackson's brother, almost killed know. the guy. I disagree. I well, like when you think about the Clinton affair, which is something that happens like proximate to this. And yeah. Everything that was made out of that, everything that was made out of OJ, it was like no one knew who Nicole Brown Simpson was. And that was the biggest story in America for two years. Yeah. If yeah. this happened, the idea that John Lithgow's character would be like, you need to get down to Arkansas to or see what's going on only with this new candidate. Like, you don't have it. On that exactly. Story. It's yeah. insane. Yeah. You work at the Washington Herald. Yeah. You I mean, also, the Julia Roberts, aka Darby Shaw, is the only person trying to figure Who out. Of this. Saw, yeah, and it's just like, oh, I've <laughs> so got it. So this gets into a fundamental thing. I, I I was reading about the movie online. There was a, from a long time ago on a, on a site called alternateending.com. This guy, Tim Brayton, wrote a pretty good piece that articulated kind of always this thing that was in my head about this movie where he lays out how this is different than all the presidents met. And in this movie, and this kind of gets to your point, is Darby is smarter than the audience. We mm-hmm. don't find out what the conspiracy is until midway, two-thirds through the movie, where you find out about the pelicans and the marshes and the court and all that stuff. But for the movie, the entire movie, she's running around knowing what is happening. I mean, she must know it's Matisse. The second Callahan dies, she's like, I am now in the center of a vast, violent conspiracy. But the audience never is allowed to catch up to that until the midway point where then the audience becomes much smarter than Darby and Gray because we know the yeah. president and Fletcher are coming after them and that all these people are like amassing against them. So you never actually have that thing where you're going step by step with Woodward and Bernstein. You're like, I know how this ends, but it's really fascinating to watch these guys uncover these things step by step. Mm. It's like they're already on step L and we're on step A and it doesn't quite work the same way as, as all the president's men. I wonder does. if that's just because one is a true story that we sure. experienced and the other is right. completely but you could have done this story where the movie is her putting together the theory. Yeah. Like her, it's it's her step by step in the library, essentially uncovering the truth about this. And instead, it's like that has to be the thing that catapults her into the conspiracy. The Butch's girlfriend word for weak link of the film, which somehow isn't everything Chris just laid out. <laughs> um, I think that it's represented in Gavin Verheek. Tucci dies, his assassin character, and we have no idea who killed him, who killed him or why. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then they kind of throw it in in the ending. It's like that the way you yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And they say, it's like, she's like, who killed Kamel? I was like, oh, that was actually that other guy who mm-hmm. stayed falling yeah. around. Yeah. I've seen this movie like five times. I still don't totally understand it. I don't either. I, I mean, I'm, it's I'm saving it for a different category, but yeah, I agree. Well, let's do it now. Okay. It's the weak link of the film. Yeah. I just, like, him getting killed, it just makes no sense because you feel like it's leading to something and then it leads to nothing for an hour. Mm-hmm. And I don't get it. We build up Kamal, we build him up, build him up, get shot. We don't know who did it or why. And, and, the, and then we don't find out. The way that they film it also looks like maybe he accidentally shot himself yes. right. through the it pillow. It is confusing. It's like the Plaxico Burris. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what it was. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got that. What stage? You got that? <laughs> I did, yeah. See, I listen, everybody, you know? Everybody yeah. sleeps on you. <laughs> uh, what stage the worst? Why is this movie 141 minutes? It's three minutes longer than all the president's men. Yeah, that's tough. 141 minutes. Yeah. There are, there's a lot of time spent being worried that Nicholas Woodison, who plays Stump, the yeah. kind of like follow-up assassin... <laughs> is going to kill them. And just a lot of shots of him, like, looking and making sure that they're nearby. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, just to feel like well, there's some wasted time. Yes. Robert Culp as the president. How are we feeling about that casting? Very believable to me. I enjoy yeah? it. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. He's doing 
He's doing Reagan if he was Clinton. At the time, like, I remember in the early 90s, like, that was probably, like, what I thought the president was like, you know? Just, like, kind of a glad-handing. Couldn't have gotten a right. whiff yeah, fire? not like now. <laughs> right. Not at all like now. You whiff mean, fire for an actor? Like, a better actor? Yeah. Well, isn't the point that he's supposed to be pretty We're doing a Grisha and... movie. Can Robert okay. Redford be the president as, like, evil Robert Redford? Can we, uh, what is it? I'm just like, saying I know, somebody but like this super is, famous. It's like a, it's a pot, like. Evil Paul Newman? Okay. Ooh. I guess Evil Paul Newman, that would be fine. Evil I just Paul don't know Newman. what you have let's against like, Robert let's Redford. Let's go. A plus Lister. Okay. I was just trying to think of A plus Listers. Nicholson. I think there's something clever about a guy who's best known as a TV actor, kind of a B tier actor right. playing the president oh. because Ronald Reagan was the president. You know, like that's. I get it. A B-tier he feels actor. like a TV actor. Um, the Ron Burgundy Flute Award for Best Time for a Pee Break also works in the Woods Asia Worst. This movie can start eight minutes later and we're fine. The opening credits is three minutes of just <clears throat> pelicans flying around yeah. in slow yeah. motion yep. with credits of everyone in the movie. Right. Yep. Then it there's really another four minutes. The, nothing happens. The pelican then, part of the brief. Yeah, yeah. it's like we get it. There's pelicans. And then Tucci gets an envelope under the hole. We're at minute eight. And yeah. he's like, oh, here's the envelope. It's like, cool. That Start the movie that way. Let's I think go. they have to do some stuff to get Gray in the movie in the first 40 minutes because ordinarily, like he really shouldn't necessarily be in it until yeah. Darby calls. But you have to set up the whole yeah, first season. Who's Gray Grantham's real life comp right now? Mags. Adrian Wojnarowski. Maggie Haberman, yeah. you think? Adrian Wojnarowski. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Whoa, O'Connor. Oh, another gray ball. <laughs> <laughs> Julie and Denzel do not appear on screen together until the 68 minute mark of the movie. Yeah. I think that's cool. I know okay. I, I, I want to start standing up for this movie because I do enjoy it a lot. And I think that, that that is cool to feel like the middle of the movie is the most momentous part. And we're waiting and waiting and waiting for them to come together. Yeah. Any other words say the worst? <clears throat> your computer's gone, so are your floppy disks and your red expandable files, mm. which is just, you yeah. know. Floppy disks. What a time. Floppy disks. I still have expandable files in my home. Do okay. you really? What's I in do? them? Documents. <laughs> Critical <laughs> briefs about the future of this country. I have uh, porn theaters. Yeah. They don't have them anymore. There's just an article in LA Times about the last porn theater in Los Angeles. There's one left. Should What's we do it called? A, the Tiki? Should we you do, a, do live, live, pod? live rewatchables there? What would we do? Cruising again? The re cruise? Dude, what other? We could do uh, hardcore with George C. Scott. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm in. I'm fully in. <laughs> that would be iconic if we did that. <laughs> It's you buy at this at the one porn theater left. So, it's a I six hour have, ticket. Okay. You can go, come in and it's have a double session. Nice. It's like an yeah. NCAA tournament yeah. game. You can yeah. come and go. <laughs> can we go I get to see Michigan <laughs> and Arizona? <laughs> 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 well, why do they want you to come and go? It's a, well, you I know don't why. mean to be cynical yeah. about it, but I'm guessing well, you no, leave. So, and, I, so I have a question about this scene and the just the general etiquette at porn theaters. Yeah. Because yeah. Yeah. direct that question right to Chris. <laughs> well, yeah, He's Kamal right here. sits like really close uh-huh. to the Supreme Court justice, and and we get a, a wide shot so we can see that everybody else is like s- spaced out. Uh-huh. There seem to be some unwritten rules, and it's just like, wouldn't someone sitting that close to you raise some? I know so, you it's, don't think it's so. Exact okay, opposite. oh, you seem very sure about that. I think the the whole the etiquette or the protocol there is the closer you get, the more it's on. Like, okay, like, all right, yeah. Did What's I ever on? tell my porn theater story? Getting handy, like like while you're watching. I a don't movie. think so. Yeah. Have I told my porn theater story in the rewatchables? Uh, I don't think so. Which camera? <laughs> <laughs> Turn the TikTok camera on, Kyle. Freshman year of college, they had this porn theater in Worcester, Massachusetts, where I went to college, called the Adonis Theater. Mm-hmm. Yeah, good name. And we thought it would be hilarious if we just went went to a movie and just made jokes. And it was, you and roughly thirty five other men. Yeah, it was like six or seven people in the hall, including okay. the great Jacko. Oh. I don't think Joe House was there. And I, he was probably playing basketball. Blue Boy? Well, Blue Boy was there. Nice. Um, we went, sat down, made jokes, did the whole peanut gallery so thing. So you guys are doing like the mystery science theater Yeah, we're just having a great time. Gotcha. It's just us in the theater. We're like, what a great You're idea. You're not ruining anyone else's time. No. Okay. No. Are you like, look at the schlong on that no. guy. Like, what are you saying? <laughs> we're just, just having a great time. Okay. And then somebody came in and they sat down in our row on the other side and pulled their pants down. And we ran out of there like a tsunami was coming. 
and we were out of there in 10 seconds. Do you think that that was done to get you out of the theater or was it just like, it's Tuesday, I got to drop oh, my pants in the like movie the theater? Oh, you think like the popcorn guy was like, I got to get these fucking idiots yeah, out yeah. of here so I'm going to go drop I, for, I actually told this story wrong because there was one person in the theater who was laughing at some of our jokes. Oh, that's great. Like, that's great. Yeah. 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 So it was Come us, join us. Yeah. Guy. And then the, re- the, the pants down guy came yeah. and cleared us out. Okay. We were out. That was my one porn theater experience. Departed. Best porn theater scenes That's ever. Departed's in there. Yeah. yeah. Philadelphia. Um, this movie. What else do we well, have? Hardcore. When hardcore. He's watching hardcore. Yeah. Hands. yeah. <gasps> oh my God. Oh. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Still going. Like George C. Scott in hardcore. <laughs> I'm so glad that Amanda has to sit next to you. <laughs> you ever see that movie? No, but it's every every okay. father's worst nightmare. Okay. <laughs> I think we should fly Paul Schrader in for the for, for the hardcore live rewatchables pod right. at the Tiki at the here last in Los Angeles theater in Los Angeles. <laughs> uh, uh, was this bear better title for this? I movie? have a couple of what's no. age the worst. Oh, you did just fire Let's off. Hear him, CR. Uh, just Thomas Callahan, Molter of Young Minds. Mm. Darby's I'm scared voice that she employs <laughs> after Thomas dies, uh, which is just basically whispering yeah. about yeah. ospreys and egrets and pelicans. And it says she talks like that for most of the rest of the movie. Yeah. And uh, I just think that that's a one note thing. And then I would also say uh, it took them way too long to find Curtis Morgan. Yeah. Yep. And that whole thing with the registrar's office and then going to the rehab center and, right. and just like so you guys could find out that that was Jake Weber seems a little bit far fetched. Better title for this movie? I'm going to say no. I like no, this is good. Brief. Is it better if it's just the brief in keeping with the titles of all the other John Grisham oh, yeah. films? Like the client, the, the client, the, the firm. firm. Well, Runaway Jury and the. You know. But the thing I like about it is the way they use the Pelican Brief in the movie and it's yeah. like, hello, have you heard about the Pelican Brief? Oh, here's the Pelican Brief. But if you, you know, like I love the when they say the title. Yeah. yeah. I, there's got to be a couple other like sketchy briefs circulating in Washington. Okay. Okay. You know what I'm saying? All right. All right. I'm pro title. How does take CR? What do you got? If Victor Matisse is one of the most powerful richest businessmen in the country to say nothing of the world, he can really only afford Kamel and Woodison to be his assassins. Like it just doesn't seem like there's any safeguards on this whole situation. It doesn't seem like there's any... So more assassins is your note. I think that they're, they are they seem to be going out of their way to make it as difficult as possible to get Darby. Yes. And and also, Woodison gets his ass kicked by like three New Orleans bouncers. Yeah. So maybe it's it's time to like pull his card mm. and put someone else on the job. Like Monty Williams in Detroit. <laughs> That's right. You've lost 17 straight. <laughs> Let's time for eight. some new blood. Yeah. What uh, do you got, Sean? Julia Roberts is wildly miscast and misused in this movie. Oh, that mm, that I'd... ties right into my hottest take. Okay. This movie is unquestionably better in 1993 with Sandra Bullock. I Oh yeah. I was thinking Jennifer unquestionably. Yeah. I was thinking Jennifer Jason Lee. Like you need a quieter actress. Like I'm waiting the whole movie for Julia Roberts to laugh and be charismatic. Right. Yeah, that she right. doesn't get to And she never does. Be effusive. It's only yeah. with does. like two Sam Shepard scenes. Yeah. Sandra and, Bullock is so, I mean, she does two years later in the net, which is not nearly as good or polished or have many as But similar actors, vibe. But same yeah. kind of, I'm on the run. Yeah. And she's way better at it. Yeah. I would have believed it more. I mean, it's obviously a huge hit because of her. And it is fun seeing her with Denzel. And it but I want to see them in a more fun movie. I, do, yeah. I mean, I do too. It it's brings not her good acting from her. As Chris said, Right around like the hour mark, she just goes into this like monotone Very voice quiet. thing for. Yeah. But it's like, I actually yeah. know like she's like I just watched my lover explode in a car and find myself chased by like evil forces. I can understand why she's whispering everything, but like there's just there's just so much of it. That's how she communicates. Also, us. you mm. just did this in Sleeping with the Enemy. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. What do you have for us? Take anything? Yeah. What Are we got? sure it wasn't the CIA? Oh. I mean, just what's up with Rupert, you know? And as you said, it's not resolved. And even the strategy, how does it benefit Matisse to kill her once the brief is out there? It's only drawing more attention to it. But if the Pelican brief and Julia Roberts and Matisse is like are being used as a decoy because the CIA funded it and set it up for nefarious reasons, and then that's why... Rupert's around to make sure. It does seem like a real self-inflicted wound by the Oval Office. Yeah. That's something that they could really easily dismiss and instead they're they're like, no, we have to like, we have to get multiple 
law enforcement and intelligence agencies evolved. I did forget to men- mention this during What's Age the Best, but I do feel like the pressuring the FBI to back off a case does have like that Trump, James That's, Comey yeah. resonance, though. Yeah. Where like the interaction between the Federal Bureau of Investigation and the Oval Office is like very tenuous and there's not supposed to be that level of communication about open cases. Right. But then there's also in that, in the very first scene when they come to inform him and it's this FBI director and the CIA director. William Aether didn't place him. Yeah. yeah. And the president is immediately like, I'm asking you right now, is the CIA, CIA involved? And mm-hmm. he's like, I'm shocked that you would even... But then that's it. Yeah. yeah. There's nothing yeah. else. And then the CIA is just lurking around the rest do of the stuff. movie. Yeah. And they do stuff. And it's not explained. Mm-hmm. I'm just putting it out there. Can I ask you a, a side question on yeah. this? Yeah. Are you a CIA person or an FBI person if you had to pick one? <laughs> Great question. Um, in what sense? Just so you pro- They're feuding. Who you, Whose side are you on? Oh, CIA. CIA. Absolutely. I think I'm pro FBI. You know why? Because CIA killed Kennedy. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good take. You're CIA? Mm. Where would you rather work, FBI or CIA? Yeah, definitely I think I'd rather work CIA. I think I'm really more of an FBI kind of guy on, like, yeah. in my core. Yeah. But CIA, CIA is cooler. Right, Amanda and I love to travel, so we'd like to... Right, okay. international <laughs> intrigue. Yeah. I think they're both pretty dangerous organizations, if I'm uh, being honest. Right. So, yeah. <laughs> Especially the CIA, who killed our president this, in 1963. Think there's some this guy at Langley listening to us right now. He's like, God damn, Sean really like, took, yeah, took my wind out of my sails. They're going to stick in on me. <laughs> but this yeah. is also, you're supposed to think that because this is a pro-FBI movie. It is. Ultimately. James and, like, B. Sicking Boyle, is like, yeah, kind he's, of noble. Right. Yeah. He's like the yeah. good character. And maybe that's because the CIA did it. I'm just putting it out there. Casting what ifs. Gris, Grisham, uh, he uh, really wanted Julia Roberts to be Darby Shaw. I don't know how hot of a take that was in 1992 when she was the hottest female star in the world. Yeah. For just to get for a part. And yeah. everybody's offering her scripts, but right. he's and his favorite also, baseball player was Ken Griffey Jr. You yeah. Know? yeah. But the reality yeah. of Grisham at that time is he's like, I'm writing these books and instantly the biggest movie stars want to make them. Yeah. This is always my favorite in the cat. This is cat. This is Julia related. When she decided she's going to do the part, she spent some time at Tulane Law School to prepare for her role <laughs> sure, yeah. and attended a couple classes. Denzel was at the post. Denzel yeah. was at Washington Post. Denzel did that as well. Can you imagine if you were just like 92? You're you're working at the Washington Post, and then Denzel Washington walks you in. Think he was hanging like, out with Kornheiser. What was he doing? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> probably was. The uh, Ruffalo Hannah Rubinick Partridge overacting award. So. I'm going to zag on this for the first time in like 317 movies. I have the Julia Denzel Pelican Brief Underacting Award Ooh. for underacting. For Julia and have Denzel? Have we had an underacting award before? For both of them. I think they're both oh, kind of they underplaying, underplaying it. it. They Ex- are. Except That's- for the car bomb scene. Right. And when she, and she kind of gets two takes to do like first her shaking reaction and then her screaming reaction, you know? She's great. It's one of her best, Julia. <laughs> she has like a convulsion, basically. Okay. But yeah, she's underacting most of it. Best that guy word. Anthony Hill's in this movie, so it's a wrap. Yeah. Yeah. He's just he <laughs> automatically wins. Yeah. No other contenders. Uh, I would say Sicking is up there for that guy, though. Yeah, but he Hill Street Blues was 20 million people. I think Atherton is on the list, too. Yeah, that's true. I know he was kind of yeah. going to be a star in the 70s, but never really got there. Yeah, that's, so that's fair. Jake Weber, too. Yeah. He's a that guy. Oh, yeah. Deanne Waiter's a word. Lithgow versus Tucci versus Shepard. Shepard counts, qualifies, so he's got to win, I it's think. It's absolutely yeah. Shepard. You guys don't think it's Tucci? For Dion Waiters? I think it's definitely Tucci. It's Tucci. <sighs> Shepard's really great. Shepard's in a lot of this movie, though, too. No, he's in He's not. He's three scenes. scenes. He, he leaves an indelible mark. Of course. That yeah. is the definition of right. Dion Waiters, we'll as I understand it, right? <laughs> Recasting Couch, two t- 2023 version. Zendaya and who? <laughs> This, this is now becoming the Tom Holland and Zendaya category. <laughs> you think Tom Holland is Greg Grantham? No, he's too young. It's got to be somebody. What a if you older. gender swap it and you do Zendaya is the reporter and Tom Holland is the aspiring law school kid? Wow. Oh, uh, I mean that's interesting. Yeah, that's basically but he's an do, incel. like don't worry, darling. <laughs> but I would still watch it. You know, <laughs> it's okay. You said don't worry, darling, but <laughs> yeah. I would still watch it. Yeah. Who's who's in the Denzel? Kind of zone It'd be right like now. Jill and Hall, Jill and Hall and Zendaya, something well, like that. I mean, but then that's yeah. like Zodiac. Driver, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Driver, Driver's Driver. a little older oh. though. Yeah. Denzel, Denzel, Denzel was a little older. Yeah. Denzel was thirty-eight when the Driver, was Driver, would be Driver's great. great. Did Driver you see Driver's Zendaya's SNL cool. skits? Get... He did well. He did for I thought he did solid. Yeah, he was a good. couple. What did you watch that? Anything? No, I didn't. What see was that Adam Driver movie? The report. Yes. 
He was pretty good in also it. Also about he, the CIA. CIA. Yeah, yeah, he has to solve some stuff. Does he have principles in that in the yes, end? I can't remember. Does. I bet Zendaya yeah. and Pete Davidson. No. <laughs> <laughs> Pete Davidson is Greg Grantham? He's doing drama. Yeah. You won't yeah. believe him as a Washington Post reporter. Definitely. Absolutely. But we could, well, we could. Maybe, yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah. We yeah. could also recast Tony Goldwyn as the president. Ooh. Because he has oh, experience. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He could be the president. That, oh, that's yeah. always fun when that happens. Half ass internet research. Um, Julia won Best Actress in 2000, and then the next year presented Denzel, Denzel oh. his Best Actor. Just the it's karma beautiful. of the whole thing. Pretty she great. was so excited. Do you remember yeah. that? Yeah. 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 And then uh, I somehow forgot this, how Pakula like, died tragically, which I, I like it's yeah. Yeah, really the sad. worst possible way to die on the highway where the pipe, somebody hits a pipe and it went through his windshield and God. killed him. Yeah. But he... I always thought he retired. I forgot that he died. Yeah, I, so I he probably had like five, did, six more years of movies. I forgot all about this until I yeah. reminded him. It's very sad. Weekend. There's a good documentary that you can get on Amazon called Alan Pakula Going for Truth, where basically every big movie star who appeared in one of his movies talks about what a genius he was. Yeah. So just for that, where it's like Redford, Harrison Ford, Julia Roberts, everyone sat for it. Um, and if you want to learn more about his career, it's really good. Even Goldman loved him. And Goldman was... Was pretty straight shooter on who he worked yeah, with. Yeah. He was like, that guy was fucking amazing. Um, Apex Mountain. Tulane? <laughs> <laughs> Is, I mean, does Tulane have like a bowl game that I don't know about? The John Hot Rod Williams gambling scandal <laughs> yeah, in the like, early 80s? Honestly, like, prove me wrong. I like it. <laughs> how about how about Grisham? Firm? Pelican yeah, Breed? Yeah, He's selling probably, ideas yeah, yeah, as movies so. that yeah, he like hasn't it. written yet? Conspiracy movies? No. No. How about the saying goodbye off the plane, reconsider, run back for the second hug? Still the bodyguard. Still the bodyguard. Edmund Newman? Yeah. He did host SNL once. Do you, do you think it's that was a bigger, bigger like audience share than this? Hosted SNL, did sketches with Eddie Murphy when Eddie Murphy was the biggest mm. star in the world. Okay. Um, Denzel Washington. Is this a Philadelphia in the same month? But I'm still going to say no. Yeah, I think it's. I, don't I think, think so. it's trained. I, I think it's so too. Yeah, I think he's at that point a major box office draw. He's not quite a huge box office draw at this point by himself. Julia is still pretty woman. Yeah, she could have. Well, she could have made any movie she wanted for the next five years. After I think that. that's true. Also, Notting Hill into Aaron Brockovich and winning so, the Oscar. And this has one. adult movie theaters until Nicholson waves the dildo. <laughs> <laughs> what about John Hurd? I would have said big. Mm. It's huge and big. Really I, important. I say home it's alone. Home Alone. It's Home Alone. It's home like, Alone. What <laughs> are we gonna do this again? It's that time of year. Yeah, Home Alone is. Yeah, yeah. it's probably Home Alone. To, he's me, Kevin's he's, dad. to me, he's yeah. Kevin Sad in Home Alone. To me, he's a bartender in after hours. <laughs> God, get out of here. Last night during the football game, Mike Tirico and Collinsworth were talking about Home Alone. They had a yeah. Collinsworth's we like, you watch, it. you like Home Alone, right? And he's like, I, and Tirico goes, I watch it every year. And I'm like, there's just no way Mike Tirico watches <laughs> Home Alone By every himself. year. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, oh, it's December 15th, time to you crank up Tirico's Home Alone. on the road, Bengals game. There's no but way. But it's Jake Browning Craig, instead what of do you bro. think? Does Mike Tirico watch Home Alone every year? Does he have children? I, I have no idea. I don't have children. I watch Home Alone a lot. Every uh, year. You, watch it every year. <laughs> you and Mike. Yeah, you should watch it with Mike. <laughs> me, me and Tariko. I just don't believe it. It seems so like, yeah, I watch it every year. It's like, all right. I would have loved to have been like, all right, first hour yeah. after the family's away. And can, like, just ask them. Yeah, like, what's your favorite part? Yeah. Yeah. Would you let like me not. and Tariko do a re-home alone? <laughs> 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 but I do it as Collinsworth. Oh, Mike, this kid's got ingenuity. <laughs> Craig plays the clip and it, clip and it comes back and you go, oh, 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 he's just having fun out there. Look at Culkin. <laughs> this kid's got a great future. <laughs> Picking nits. <laughs> There's probably better protection for Supreme Court justices. Sure. I know they self-referentially say it in the movie, but yeah. you just walk into the old guy's you know, apartment and just shoot him. He's got one caretaker. How does he get in? Because the establishing shot is like, I guess the FBI agents, they're not Secret Service agents, like changing shifts. Yes. And you see like the nursing aide like wave from the window. I think he's supposed to be like, 
in the book, you see how he, he is leaves. the world's greatest assassin. Right. Uh, so I think he's able to like maybe scale the wall or you know cat burglar style. Okay, that's <laughs> that's my that's, that's that was my theory. take. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Greg Grantham goes away to his cabin, mm -hmm. and then Darby just calls the newspaper and pretends right. it's his sister, and they're like, "Here's the address." Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, it's he's a major investigation, and then also, she can find it without GPS. Yeah. No editor has ever been to their writer like, why don't you just go away and think about it for a while? This is my yeah. biggest yeah. problem with this movie. Where it's just like you're on this How editors act? The, the, li you never the said Lithgow this character. character. In 2014. Right. I just don't understand what the fuck that guy's talking about. He's like, let's not focus our energy and time on the biggest story in the history of American politics. <laughs> let's do something else. Like, it makes no sense. It's like a... Maybe that's why I was the Washington Herald but not the Washington yeah. Post. But it makes you think as you're... It made me think at least when I was watching the movie that like John Lithgow's in on it because John Lithgow, it's like... It's, oh. it's right oh, after like Ricochet, to, it's yeah. after Cliffhanger. He's trying to redirect You're him. like, okay, yeah. so is he in on this conspiracy? But he's not. He just sucks at his job. It's so weird. Is this movie yeah. more fun if it's the guy from Ricochet as Denzel's editor? <laughs> that would be good. not realize it? Yeah. Would the FBI really flip out about a Pelican brief? Well, now, you mean in 93 or now? In 93. Probably they wouldn't take it seriously because yeah. they're not great at their jobs. I'm going to say they just throw that in the garbage. Yeah. John Hurd says he's Tells Darby he's five foot ten, 180. Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> Just no. You think he's heavier? You think no. he's adding like a Chris Paul I two think inches he's like there? 220. Oh. And 5'8. Yeah. I don't know. I actually, I was thinking about this because when I was pregnant, yeah. at the very end, I was like, I think I was like almost 190 and like the similar shape that John Hurd is in this movie. <laughs> and I was like, oh, so 180 like actually probably does make sense because I was like protruding. A you had another human inside yeah. you though. Well, he no, just I, has like so, a lot of hoagies. Sure, but I was like, okay, so if I was 190 with another, like my my son was really big, then 180 and 5, I'm like almost 5'10". It sounds it sounds about right, honestly. I think okay. I can verify it. You know, and and the way that it's distributed. I think you're being generous. That's yeah. Uh, okay. I think he, he's just fat. Okay. <laughs> But he's like, fuck it, I'll be topless. It was great. Yeah. Yeah. He's going yeah. for it. John Hurt always goes for it in movies. Yeah. yeah he was, Same uh, he with was the Sopranos. One. He's disgusting in the Sopranos, and he's so oh, good. Oh, yeah. Sequel. Oh, do you have any nitpicks? Uh, we covered basically I, I, A lot of it is just like when you rewatch this movie a bunch of times, how many major plot points hinge entirely on luck. Like, yeah. they should have died in the parking garage, but the Doberman attacks the woman mm. who's hunting them. Yeah. Who, also, who is she working for? The woman who follows her into the safe deposit. No idea. Uh, oh, I thought she was one of the Matisse people because then she is in the garage. That's right. Yeah. Yes. And then she sees them in the rear view mirror. The other is thing is just like at the registrar's office, like the, the guy, like the chance that the guy is standing next to Denzel is like, hey, I just wanted to tell you about the uh, like the person you're looking for. Mm. I have two really small ones. Yeah. Number one, right after the registrar office, they finally find the really the hallucinating. The law student on leave. Why is he so hot? It's really distract. They just like cast an incredibly like handsome Abercrombie model. Yeah, just very confusing. Might have been somebody called in sick for that part. Okay, of the might have been like River yeah. Phoenix was supposed to play that right. person. Right. Okay. And then sure. Had a bad day. And then number <laughs> two in like the video affidavit. <laughs> what? Why is that? It's, it's a Grisham movie. <laughs> Huge cast. Okay, in the video yeah. affidavit, yeah, it's just like no one needs, no one has that many saws in their basement. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's, it's like, a great take. It's so many saws. Yeah. So either he's up to something, or that was yeah, just that enough. was like yeah. he's actually James Gum. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jim Gum. Sequel, prequel, prestige TV, all black cast. I got the I got the sequel that's just ready made for you. Oh, I was going to say Prestige TV. So was I. I felt like that this could have be been easily on Amazon. Let's do it. Let's just do it. Why not? Somebody. But we yeah, in the book, Darby goes to the Caribbean. Yeah. And Gray goes and meets her there and is like, we'll stay. I'll stay for like a month with you because they're together. How are we not doing Denzel and Julia Roberts cocktail sequel? They're living oh. in the Caribbean and they this started really a, a bar. Is Can Cruz be in it? Sure. Can he be Flanagan? He can be the Brian there, Brown character yeah. teaching them how to bartend. That's pretty good. Co <laughs> Pelican Brief 2, Cocktails yeah. and Dreams. <laughs> the Pina Colada Brief. I actually had... <laughs> thinking about that, these two tones are going to work together. I had a tweak off, off everything you just said. 
So when they do these movies and the person escapes at the end yeah. and they're in mm-hmm. some awesome location, her location was like a little too awesome. She's just on the water and yeah. some. How did she get know, that awesome. TV so she's quickly? She's in Fiji and she's where, got how does she have TV money? reception? Is she in Fiji? Where, I, I don't. I, it just seems like. What's it. her bank account? Did she get paid by anybody? I'm sure the FBI right. set her up with a Swiss bank account, and they're just like, "Here's here's two hundred thousand dollars. Just don't don't ever say." Is anything. that something they do? I don't know. Like in real life, she's probably on the third floor of some seedy motel in Fiji. Just making ends meet. Classic Fiji motel <laughs> location. <Yeah. laughs> well, she, where she is, is she's in the freaking water in yeah. this awesome it place. like Hawaii. Yeah. Or Mexico. Yeah. TV. Yeah. 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 Is this movie better with Wayne Jenkins, Danny Trejo, Catherine Hahn, Steve Buscemi, Sam Jackson, J.T. Walsh, Byron Mayo? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I finally Baker listened to that Hall. one. Really, really good stuff. You, it, can, you can congratulate Chris because yeah. Sean and I you just You mean saw. Byron. Yeah, you can congratulate Byron. I CR, that, what, what's the answer? The answer is JT Walsh as Matisse. Mm. Oh, mm. It's great. just right there for them and they don't take it. Never. But if Wayne Jenkins had been in it yeah. and he had said, God damn, Darby! <laughs> I didn't know I was working with Jim Garrison over here. You put together a conspiracy that might save the country itself and an endangered motherfucking bird. You better stop dating your teachers, though, or that guy's going to jail a long fucking time, big boy. Uh, is that your first experience with Wayne? No, I had it during Mr. and Mrs. Smith, too. Oh, but that's it's right. Really that's special right. special every time. Yeah. But I think JT Walsh was really there. yelling really loudly. <laughs> yeah, you. <laughs> I, I thought you were going to go with Byron Mayer. Last time I was sitting next to him. So I Darby was like, Gray, let's Darby. get in bed. I know you and Gray are sharing a cabin. It's wet it outside. It can be wet in here. Come I on. Got a king size bed, baby. <laughs> I always protect my sources. <laughs> <laughs> Me and my friend Kamal went to a little movie theater last night. Broke out some popcorn. What happened happened between consenting adults. Another film by Alan Bakula. Mm. <laughs> I feel so violated. <laughs> oh my God. We're sitting so close together. <laughs> Robert Loggia and Sam Tucci, Stan Tucci at a fucking adult movie theater. Oh, uh, uh, they're like, I love this movie. <laughs> it's a good one. I love when the sailors come in. Let me tell you, this guy's not a cable installer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that pizza's not even warm. <laughs> Uh, just one Oscar. <laughs> Does anyone deserve an Oscar for this movie, Amanda? I really, I don't think so. <laughs> it sounds like Byron Mayo might have if they yeah. found a way to work him in. Uh, probably an answer questions. Could Anthony Hield have ever played anything in his prime other than a huge, oily, sneering scumbag? Like, could he have been the dad in Home Alone? <sighs> no, because then no. you'd be like, where's his, like, torture chamber for Kevin? You know? Yeah. Yeah. Like, talk about typecast. You just see him, you're like, ah, yeah. oh, this guy sucks. Hate this guy. Um, Greg Ant- Grantham, dating, married, divorced, asexual, gay? What's going on here? There's some divorced energy. There is. I was thinking yeah. divorced. Like, home I, office. Exactly. Yeah. And it's Maybe like. Maybe just mention it for two seconds. Yeah. Now I was that I'm, said. I'm like, why is this guy Now single? that I'm divorced, yeah. dot, dot, dot. This is a guy who's going on. PBS on Sunday mornings to talk about the biggest news in the world. Right. And is looks like Denzel Washington. I'm I mean, going through a divorce. Work, date. You know? I'm separated. Sure. Where did Darby's plane land? So he says you can take my plane wherever and then you can disappear from there. So am I trying to pick like what connecting airport she picked? Yeah, this is you why know? it's an unanswerable okay, question. Okay, like Dallas? <laughs> like, you know. Oh, I thought, well, her plane eventually lands <laughs> right. in like the Caribbean, Bahamas, mm-hmm. Fiji, Okay, where Hawaii. she eventually goes. I think the it, Caribbean, I really... felt Caribbean-ish. I basically learned about the Caribbean and certainly its tax structures from John Grisham novels. Yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. Like it would be firm, cool if she was... Working at the bar that Avery Tolan goes to. Right. Mm, if she yeah. hooked up with get Hackman, the, that's the sequel. Grisham yeah. verse going. Okay. Could there, somebody write a movie, a book about John Grisham 
doing something illegal in the Cayman Islands and that he's been telling us all along in all these different books. And oh, this yeah. Person's oh, trying to, he's giving yeah. it This person puts the puzzle together yeah. and gets mm. murdered and then a college student has to figure it out. That's a good idea. We should nice. cut that out of this and right. try to develop that. Did Darby and Gray win a Pulitzer, Amanda? And did she go? I don't think she went. I hope they won a Pulitzer, but it's pretty political, you know? Do people win Pulitzers for having good theories that are right? Well, she wrote the story. She got the code byline. Yeah, that's true. Good reporting. They had to get chased a couple times. Parking garage. I forgot to mention what's age the best. The Doberman in the car coming mm -hmm. out of nowhere to yeah. bark at somebody who's already in danger. And saving their works. life. Do you think that... Just a lot of Dobermans in cars in yeah. action movies. How long do you think Gray would be able to fend people off of Darby? Because <clears throat> you would think that people would be like, my, my mission in life is to dox Darby, like find out where Darby is. Yeah. Well, you would also think that people's mission in life would be to solve who assassinated That's two true. Supreme Court justices, and it's just Darby. So... <laughs> Best double feature choice of this movie. Would you go to The Firm? Sure. Just bang yeah, them out. Yeah, three it's a yes, long yeah. evening, yeah. but it's it's a fun one. I, w I might recommend The Parallax View <clears throat> from Alan J. Pakula. Oh, a little before and after? Yeah, which okay. I think is like closest actually to what this movie is like yeah. in terms of like there are dark powers behind this country and it's hard to know who they are. What about hardcore? <laughs> Yeah, sure. I mean, oh my yeah. god! Do you oh, do you want to announce the additional second leg of our live tour throughout across the porn core. theaters just, of America? Just the combat zone. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Um, the they Indian make it sound like George C. Scott is yeah coming Orgasm. when you do that. No, he's like he, he's that, but, but that's what's so weird about it. It it is weird. He's you are groaning. communicating that, George C. Scott. They're like, George, dial it up. Just a little, We're going to do one more take. Can you just dial <laughs> it up a little more? He's never had to be asked to dial it up, I, I assure you. That's what he does. The Indian Red Zouan Air Award for what happened the next day. Here's what I have. Darby disappears for 22 years and then does a narrative podcast that becomes bigger than cereal. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> that is really yeah. Have we considered that she's at Zouan Nao? Oh, interesting. It's kind of got that how energy. How much... Uh, like, is she still using her, like, I'm scared voice as the podcast voice? No, she's got her she's voice like, back. Okay. My name's Darby Shaw. Okay. Thank you for listening to Serial. <laughs> still scared. <laughs> what piece of memorabilia would you want from this movie, Sean? Mm, John Lithgow's uh, desktop computer. <laughs> With the, the green and black screen. Oh, oh, yeah. I was taken back to the early days of the... Yeah, when what you is go that, cross the, the after you looked at it. Yeah. Oh my yeah. God. I, I used to like had double vision after being at the Herald for eight hours. I would go with the original Pelican Brief, how they had it with the Oh, Darby that's show. awesome. Mm. Yeah. yeah. That's a cool one. Uh, you, you usually get mad when I pick the car, but uh, I would like Callahan's Great car. car. And uh, oh, yeah. We yeah. should put that yeah. in What's Age the Best. I forgot. Denzel's yeah. Howard University t shirt. Oh, yeah. that's good oh. too. I was going to do the Mets hat and then wear it during every. Oh, it's Nick's? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I wrote down Matt's because I thought that it would taunt you even more. <laughs> no, it's Nick's. Yeah. That's a legendary Nick's photo also among Nick's him. fans. Yeah. yeah. Is Julia looking cool in, in a Nick's hat? The Coach Finstock Award for Best Life Lesson. If you find out about a giant government conspiracy, just keep it to yourself. <laughs> Not worth it. Would you do that? Just keep it to yourself. You end up being chased you know in a parking garage, doing? getting saved you by a pit bull. You would sprinkle it on pods. Just like you would you'd be like, don't aggregate me. But I think this is who killed the, the Supreme Court justice. You literally on this podcast <laughs> talked about who you think killed JFK. Well, on that, this podcast. because it's factual. <laughs> <laughs> who won the movie? Amanda? Mm. Can Sam Shepard be an answer? Sure. It could be mm. whatever you want. There's no peer pressure I guess on the Grisham. rewatchables. John Grisham did. I had Grisham as well. Yeah. I'm going to go Denzel. <clears throat> Here's my case. Denzel never has to rely on another movie star again after this movie. Every other movie he makes after this, he can do it on his own. Yeah. But you'd he, even say Crimson Tide? I think if you had swapped out somebody less legendary than Gene Hackman, that movie still would have worked. Yeah, um, if it's Anthony Held. Yeah. That movie was sold yeah. on Denzel. Yeah. It wasn't sold the way that Pelican Brief is sold on Julia, the way that Philadelphia is sold on Hanks. So to me, this is like him crossing the line to from A to A plus. I'm gonna go conspiracies. Oh, when the movie, like just the idea of conspiracies mm -hmm. or just, it's a very rich text, still relevant. And I like, I like the way Pakula handled and it. And honestly, way more fun in the early nineties, pre-internet. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, we just sit around, smoke some cigarettes, and argue about who killed JFK, and then everybody went home. Yeah. Then something changed. What do you got, Craig? I don't love the slander on the acting in this movie, on Julia Roberts, and even a little bit of Denzel. I think that we have a very strong relationship to a certain kind of performance from her. I think this movie is, like you guys said, it's too long, it's kind of slow, the plot's pretty murky. You really got to focus and pay attention, and there's a lot of jargon and talking. And the fact that this made $200 million and it's still a good movie, to me, is a testament to Julia Roberts and Denzel, like, keeping you there the entire time. Yeah. I like that this movie was unfussy, and it's it's unlike most movies today where it's like, this is just the two of them. It is a political thriller. It's like, there is no real action. There's no CGI. It's like, they just got to act in the movie. And... uh they held my attention the entire time for a movie that I feel like has a million flaws. Was so, it a first watch? Yeah. Liz and I both. Um, That's a good summary. Holds your attention the entire time. Yeah. yeah. Pretty flawed. Major star power. Fun to see the I two think stars it's actually, in one and, movie. And I think to the point we were making earlier, it's actually a fun movie to watch in chunks. Like, it's yeah. it's not a bad mm-hmm. movie to be like, oh, wow, the middle it of the It feels like song. a TV show converted into a movie. A little it feels bit. like yeah. it was yeah. 10 yes. episodes and they condensed it down. I really do think they should just... That was like Oppenheimer. Yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ. I'm with you. Yeah. Not now, Bill. It's like three (laughs) one-hour episodes. Bill, welcome. I just, I... Was Oppenheimer a miniseries or a movie? I just got a concussion. (laughs) From that take. It's amazing. (laughs) I've been concussed. (laughs) What a year year for you at the cinema. You got more takes you want to uncork, but now's the time. I wanted to watch Oppenheimer at home because I had to take notes with all the plots and characters. Mm-hmm. It was you much should easier. do it. I had this my podcast whiteboard next will to self-destruct it. in three minutes, like pot, where you're just like, "Here's the year in movies." Oppenheimer too long. Who says I'm not yeah. going to do that? Yeah. Okay. You know, can what you else? do that plus JFK? But you did need Revisited. a you did need a whiteboard for Oppenheimer, right? Did people actually go into the theater and just kind of watch that blind? I think yes. you just pay attention to yeah, it, they did. follow uh, the characters. But, but I still, I, but I did that twice, and I still don't know what happens in the last hour. So. <laughs> Like, but you know, you Robbie Malik is writing Mayo it down on his clipboard. Though, so it's fine. Yeah, he'll. yeah, he'll explain. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty legible. I don't know. <laughs> Thought it was good. I like that movie. Oppenheimer's good. I like. Yeah, it. it was good. Yeah. <laughs> Need cool. to see it three, four. Do you more like Oppenheimer? Times. I loved it. Yeah, it's a good yeah. movie. It's great. What's better, Pelican Reef or Oppenheimer? <laughs> <laughs> 